Hello all and welcome to the channel Tech and More. As part of our ongoing series that is designing test cases for the scenario payment gateway. Welcome to another video wherein we are going to see the different types of functional test cases for the payment gateway scenario, right? So without wasting any more time, let's straight away jump on to the test cases in the spreadsheet, right? So uh, in the interest of time and to not be repetitive, uh, and as I mentioned in every video, uh, the details of the test case of how, of how the basic structure of a test case looks like. We have this first video in this playlist wherein all these details are discussed at length. So you can go and have a look at the same. In this video, I'm going to talk about the test case title or the test case heading and then going to show you that particular steps in practical. That is the intent. So we, uh, this is being done to show you maximum test cases and to keep the video short as well, right? So let's talk about the first test case. The first test case, and it's highlighted here, it says validate the user is able to select all available payment modes one by one, right? Let me zoom it a bit if it's not visible to you. Let me scroll it, yeah. So as the line is self-explanatory, it says that the payment modes should be uh, visible. All the required payment modes should be visible. So let me go ahead and let me have a look at the payment gateway page. So as you can see, the different types of payment methods are all visible to you and are selectable as well, right? So this makes this test case a pass. So we are going to go ahead with this test case, right? Then let me take you to the next test case or the next one, which it says, mm, uh, this one, yeah. It says validate the user is unable to proceed without filling in the mandatory data. So what it means, so wherever the mandatory data is required, the user should not be able to proceed without filling it in. For example, when you select a credit or debit card option, the filling in of credit card number, the name and the uh, year of expiry is very critical, is, is mandatory, right? So you should not be able to proceed without filling, filling it in, right? So let's see it in action. So let me click on here and it might take some time. So just give me a second and I'll open it for you so you can see it straight away. So as you can see here, uh, it, it, it is asking for card number, nickname and expiry date. Let me click on enter card details without filling it any data, right? So it says there is a problem. Card holder's name is required. Card number is required. Expiration date is required, right? So as it says, without filling in the mandatory data, you should not be able to proceed, which is working as expected. So this test case is also a pass. Now the next functional test case in the picture is validate the currency displayed is configured corresponding to the region, right? So that means that this currency symbol, this should be corresponding to the, uh, to the country from where this website is being accessed, right? So if you see here, uh, this, this currency is rupee and I'm accessing this website from India, which is amazon.in. So corresponding to any country, be it Japan, China, Australia, or any country, the, the, the currency a symbol should be in tandem with the country, right? So this test case is also a pass. Then going on to the next one, it says validate the user is unable to select all available payment modes at one go, right? Uh, this means that I should be able to select only one payment method at a time. I should not be able to select more than one at a time. Now one might assume that, you know what, this is a very, very, uh, I would say uh, an irrelevant test case because uh, I mean, what website would have multiple payment uh, payment methods available. So the point here is that you do not think of this as a stable environment. What you're seeing right now is a live website. Uh, when you are testing practically in your job, in your work, you are given a website or a project or a software that is being worked on by, worked on by the developers at a given point of time, right? And of course, had the developers not been prone to mistakes, the QA domain would not have existed, right? So you ha always have to think from the perspective that the software is being developed, the internal testing is happening right now, and it is prone to a lot of work. So in that case, you have to make sure that this type of button that the developer has set is a radio button and not a checkbox or multi-select checkbox, right? So that makes it a valid test case. And of course, it is working as expected. Now let's go on to the next one. Next one says, validate the user is not able to proceed with blocked cards to make the payment, right? So let me go ahead and let me click here and let me uh, put in any random number for the credit card for example this one and then again this one and let me put it as tam and expiry date as let's say 2025 and enter card details right see it says card number is not correct right so this also makes it a valid test case that is you should the user should not be able to enter any irrelevant card number why is this happening 
I mean, you have, you might have this doubt that why is this test case important? Because you have to save your uh, website or your software from some uh, unethical people as well, right? So some people might just do some SQL injections to, you know, uh, corrupt your system. So it is important to have a security on that as well, or to have a test case on that as well. So as discussed, this is also working as expected. Now let's jump to the next one. It says validate the user is able to select credit or debit card as mode of payment. And the similar and the next three, four test cases are similar. The next one says validate the user is able to select net banking as mode of payment. Then it says validate the user is able to select. I think you, you might be understanding it by now. <clears throat> you have to make sure that valid that the user is able to select these different payment methods and the user is able to proceed as well. Right. So, uh, of course, uh, you, you should, I mean, of course, I, I won't be able to show you all these test cases in detail, but yes, you have to be able to select it and make the payments accordingly. So these test cases are about this. Now, lastly, there is one last test case, which is an end to end test case or an E to B test case that says validate the user is able to pro proceed with correct payment detail. This makes it for the entire flow. So an end to end test case is basically wherein you are supposed to start from step one. So by now <clears throat> you might have noticed that a, a couple of test cases here are, uh, you know, they are, they are discussing the different scenarios, not the entire scenario at one go, right? For example, selecting card payment and then mandatory details. And then, uh, you know, in, in, if you have seen the previous video, seeing the UI and everything, but in end to end test case, it basically means right from logging into the app website and then picking up a product, going on to the payment gateway, selecting your payment method, filling in the details, submitting it, getting the confirmation message, getting the email. All that entire flow makes one end to end test case for this particular scenario, right? So an end to end test, test case is very critical for sanity testing purposes. That is when you have to see whether the things are working from the happy path point of view or not, right? So that makes it a very important part. So you always have to make sure that you always prepare an end to end test case for a test scenario, right? So that's all. That's, uh, th these are all the functional test cases I had in my mind and I didn't put in them to you as well. Of course, there are n numerous other test cases that you can have in mind. That is the beauty about QA that you can think of n number of test cases while testing out the functionality provided they are in the scope. So an assignment for you that you have to go ahead and you have to uh, put in your test case ideas in the comments. I do not want the details. Of course, I just want the test case heading that will do. And uh, I'll see them and uh, let's see who writes the most out of the box, out of the box test case. Right. So thank you so much for watching the video and I hope that you like it. And of course, if you do, please share and subscribe with your circle. So, you know, we get the motivation on a regular basis to keep on working. So yeah, that's all. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.